Hello everyone, Exedra here, bringing you Season 2, Episode 13 of Sega 2 Madness, a mod pack by John Bam and M1 Jordan Allen. So, Episode 13, that's a pretty unlucky number, and unfortunately, it's going to be a bit of a basic episode, because we have so much things to take care of. We unfortunately don't have any processing set up yet, and it's hurting us in our progression. I've been concentrating constantly on progression, 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 but at this point, I need to start uh, making all of the basic materials to be able to get to the next level, because this is not an easy mod pack, and for the next level, beating the Wither, we're going to need a lot of railgun and a lot of power, because I still haven't died, and I'm not expecting to die anytime soon. This is something that feeling er very important to me one of the things that we finished doing in the last episode is that we finished working on this mob farm and making it work pretty well we added a second level and the second level is where we produce all of our uh, wither skeleton oh this is going to be noisy so we produce all of the wither skeleton and we need some wither skeleton skull to be able to produce the wither let's go just take a quick look at this this is the second level of the mob farm, and that's where all of the more high-powered mob can create it. And why are they flooring instead of going down? I don't understand. This mob farm used to work very well, very well in my other playthrough. Maybe I need more flowing water. I'm not quite sure. But anyway, I put some elevators between each level because this is going to be the future level and I want to be able to access everything easily. I have a quick idea to fix this. It's going to be a bit risky unfortunately, but if my mobs are not flowing down and I'm not able to get the mob drops that I want... Yeah, see, no Wither Skeleton Skull. I'm getting some skulls, but not the Wither Skeleton Skull and I need to defeat the Wither, which means that at some point I'm going to need Wither Skeleton Skull. So let me just pass a couple of things in here and what I'm going to do is create two empty spots in my flowing water. When I set up the six square, like one, two, three, four, five, six square of my uh, witch water, I put it in a corner there so it's flowing everywhere. What I'm thinking of doing is putting a sign here and a sign here so that there's two corners where I can actually start... Whoa, wait. What's going on here? Oh, I'm out of power. Okay, so let's fix the mob farm quickly, and then let's fix the power. Do I have any sign? I have none left. Oh. No, I have none left, so let's create some signs. And let's go up in there and fix that right now. And I also need some juice. So many things to take care of. So let's grab some juice. And I want to go fix the mob farm ASAP because it's going to be night and I need to start producing all of the resources I want. Hmm. No! So in case you missed what happened, I ended up destroying a block that I did not want to destroy. Hmm. Let's try to put it back. Okay, so that block is back there. Let's put a sign right here. So here there's not going to be any witch water, which means that the mobs that go on that will have to drop down. Can I turn it around with a wrench? That is the question. But as you saw, the mob did fall down correctly. So this is what we've been wanting. Yes! Oh, that is amazing. Okay, so that's exactly what I want. Let's close this right here. And let's do the same thing on the other side. This is a lot of risk, but I need to do it. Ah, where's the sign? Okay, sign. Let's put a sign right here which means we're creating another hole. So now we have two holes where the water can flow through and by the water being able, well, sorry, where the water does not flow, exactly, that's exactly what I need it to be. So by the water not flowing, it forces them up to fall. 
and now all of the mobs should be going. In. So I think that this is fixed. I may need to readdress it later, but for now, let's keep it like that. So the reason I said this was going to be like a more slow episode is that we're not processing any resource and I need a lot of iron. If I look at iron right now, let's transform all of that into ingot so I can have a real count of what I have. I have 204 iron and I have these 12 iron ore, but I need to take those 12 iron ore and go smelt it and everything. Nothing's automated yet because that's all boring tasks that I didn't want to include in any of the episode and I wanted to progress as fast as possible. But now we have a lot of progression, we just need to get to a point where we have a lot of resource to go with it. So, this whole episode is about setting things up and importing things. And I want to show a little bit what I'm going to be doing, because although I've done that in a previous playthrough, if you guys haven't watched the first season, well, you won't know what's been going on. So, for this place here, the, that floor has been my easy storage setup. But I don't have any way of automatically importing things into my storage system, nor exporting stuff. So what I'm going to do is that I want to create some input port. I'm going to create four input port. And I don't really need four, but there's a very good reason, again, for why I'm creating four input port. So let me look at wood. Let's transform all of this jungle wood, because jungle wood, there isn't much we can do with. And just... Let's craft one stack of this wood, and now we can go into crafting some input port. So we're going to want 16 pistons. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 10, 11, 12, 14, 13, 14, 15, 16, counting with etc. This is your new hobby, guys. One input port. Now I'm going to need two more sets of blank box. One, two, I'm going to need three more blocks of quartz. One, two, three, and I should be able to craft my four. I'm out, <laughs> now I'm out of uppers. So one, two, three, wow. I'm just out of everything that I need right now. So let's do this, craft a couple of chests and some more input, uh, hoppers. So I think three more are needed. One, two, Hmm, is the other input? Oh, yeah, it's already in there. So, three input port, and really, I only want one input port for now because the input port works so fast that you don't need to have a crazy amount. But from the input port, you can make the extraction port. So, now I need six more hoppers one, two, three, four, five. Oh. And, and six perfect we need some more bars so let's create some more iron bars one more set should be okay and then we're going to need redstone comparator we're going to need six oh which means 18 redstone torch i'm not gonna count i'm just going to click until i get close to the number i want 60 <laughs> 16 uh and then we'll go for 17. It's kind of funny how I'm always just barely on the edge of being able to make what I need and I end up running out of one specific resource. So this, I'm going to need six of those. And now I should be able to make the three extraction port. And the reason I need to make more extraction port than input port is that it's not that the quantity of items cannot be managed through one extraction port. It's the quantity of... Um, What's it called again? The, the number of filters that I can set on this. Let's remove this right here. And I'm going to remove that one and move it right here. That My magnet was on, so I'm not really scared about that. So that I'm going to move right here so that I can put the input port right here. I'm going to set this one to insert. So now technically nothing should be going in there. Everything should be going in the system. Let's go back downstairs and just right click this quickly to say this one extract always active and the only reason i'm doing that is that i want to transfer everything in here so you see that it's working and it's transferring stuff i'm going to empty this whole chest and once this whole chest is empty 
everything from the mob farm should now be getting into our system. I'm also going to connect that to the um, farm right here because I need to empty that chest for sure. But it doesn't... Oh, I heard a bird. So I'm always making sure to play with sound now. The extraction port. Now I can talk about the extraction ports a little bit. I'm gonna... Let's go back downstairs. I'm going to put an extraction port and... I'm hearing a bird. Let's just get rid of that bird because I don't like the position. Oh, and it's transporting a creeper. So these are the worst kind of birds because since they're transporting a creeper, if they come toward me, they'll bring the creeper on my base and blow up my base. Okay, so that's taken care of. So let's get back to what I wanted to do. What I'm going to want to do right now is break this in the corner and I'm going to put the extraction port right here. Um, yeah, let's put the extraction port right here. The only problem I have right now is that it means that this extraction port is not connected. But that's something that's going to be easy to fix. But that lets me show you. The problem is I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine uh, spots to be able to set for extraction. So I'm going to set that to whitelist and the materials that I want to process the most, I'm going to extract from one of those two corners. So I'm also going to put an extraction port on this corner right now. So first extraction port is going to be everything that has to do with only pulverizing. And this extraction port is everything that needs to be pulverized and cooked. So that's all good. And this should be in it by now. Yeah, it's empty. So let's break this. And you want to make sure that you're... Ooh, that's another bird. Like I said, I'm not playing this pack without sound anymore. If I don't have sound, I'm reloading everything. I'm closing everything down and reloading everything because I really don't want to risk it. I can't believe how far I've come without dying. And I'm starting to get the feeling that I might be able to end this without dying. Okay, so, <clears throat> sorry, back to processing. So I'm going to set up just one part of the processing to show you how one part's going to work, and then I'm going to set up the other ones during my uh, time lapse. So the other thing I have to fix is lava. So let's get back to the book, and the reason we're going to go back to the quest book is that we actually can do a little bit of, well, of progression for what we need next. So here, enter chests, tanks. Want to move items and fluid around with no pipe or cables? Using enter chests and tanks let you do so. There are three spots to dye wool on the chest or tank to create channels. The same pattern of color will link the chest or tanks. So we're going to create two enter tanks right now. Enter tanks. Because I want to be able to move lava around. So we're going to need two cauldron. One, two. And then we can make those two ender tank. And with these two ender tank, I want to color them to lava. So, no. Uh, yes, I have a lot of rose red. So I'm going to grab six of those. It's a lot of rose red, but now that we have the dye seed, I don't quite care so much. And the first setup we're going to do is a very stupid... Oh, okay, that's an ender eye. I don't care so much. It's a very stupid basic setup. I'm going to put one right here, and I'm going to switch it to red and red all red because red to me is lava it cries lava so it's easy to understand then let's set that one ready and let's grab it back and let's bring it back there to start producing lava from it so i'm going to go back right here and i'm going to climb here and plop it here that even make any sense so oh sorry kept hitting the same button multiple times so push here so now lava is getting into the ender storage tank and if i go on the other side lava should be in that tank because it's connected through the magic of ender and we'll pull that one to pull and we'll set that one to output so when the red is on top it means output when the blue is on top it means input so all of the lava being produced there is being pushed into this tank, which is being put into this lava generator, which is powering this. And now look at this. In one moment, the whole field was harvested. 
but now I'm getting things in my inventory because there's no place. So it's kind of has nowhere to go, which is the next thing we're going to address. Well, no, sorry. I see it's the next thing we're going to address, but like I said before, it's not something you need to see. All I'm going to say about that is that during my time lapse, I'm going to move, remove that chest and I'm going to put a conduit going this way around and I'm going to bring this all the way back here into that one input port because like I said that input port it can manage a lot it doesn't need to I don't need like 12 input port to be able to put in stuff into my system and with the input port being so expensive and me wanting to waste almost no resource I don't want to waste any time on that so the other thing I'm going to do during my time lapse is probably going to move this power generation because if I'm going to have a conduit to bring the items to my base right here, what do I need to have power here for? I can also add bronze energy conduit to bring power to this farming station and have everything work that way. So I'll have the farming station being powered from somewhere else. So the next step I wanna talk is I wanna set up my first exporting station. And like I said, now I have one in the corner here and one in the corner here, and those two are not reachable by the system. So we're just going to quickly address that. These storage box. So at easy. Uh, why can I do a commercial A? At, okay, easy storage. So these easy storage box, the small one, are kind of easy to make. So we're going to make one, two, three, four of these. No, I need more than four. So let's make some more chests. One, two, three. Ah. Let's make chests the easiest way. One, two, three, four, twelve. Perfect. Now let's make some storage box, so that's one. And I'm gonna create two more sets by two, doing two more blank box. And basically this is going to provide a little bit more storage, really not a lot, like just a really a little, little bit more, but it has a dual value. By breaking these three things here and putting these down like so, I'm one, oh, one, providing more storage and two connecting these two um, what's the name again these two output box so that's resolving this issue now if I go back down here oh this is really annoying just going to try and get rid of that stupid enderman hopefully you will teleport and just teleport out and go die somewhere it's not being hit by anything I'm gonna try and help it along if you shoot at an enderman, see it teleported. So now if I go downstairs, it's finally not there anymore. Which is the only thing I wanted to achieve. I wanted to get rid of it. Let's put back another fence right here and down there just to protect myself. Now that we're without the enderman, what I can actually do is come back here. I'm going to grab the sag mill. So let's grab the sag mill. Oh! Whew, that was bad. I forgot to turn my magnet on before. You always want to make sure your magnet is on so that you can catch everything that you're actually releasing without breaking. So now you can come back down here and I'm going to make this corner the smelting slash uh, the smelting pulverized slash smelting corner. Since I will never need to have access to the sag mill I'm just going to be cheap and put it right there to get rid of it. So I'm going to remove this side and I'm going to put this side to push. Perfect. And I'm going to put the top side to pull. So we're going to receive material from there into the sag mill, which is then going to be pushed into this alloy smelter. And I'm going to put this to this side to pull. Uh, not none. Pull. And I'm going to put the top side to push. So now I'll be able to put some ender conduit like so. Let's break this ender conduit right here and right there. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull ores from there. So this is act, uh, extract always active. And here I'm going to, hmm, I do need some ore though. So ore, I absolutely want to manage the gold ore, the iron ore. I'm also going to manage the copper because I do need some copper and the lead. Everything on. Um, you know what? Let's let's 
produce as much as I can silver and aluminum and let's let's just start with that so from here I'm going to say extract whitelist iron gold then silver then copper then lead and then aluminum and now all of this is being extracted and I'm going to set that into insert and immediately I'm starting to get some ore processing so the ore is getting processed and put in there which then gets put to this pushed to this alloy smelter which is smelting it and re-importing it back I have to bring it connected to this which is going to be easy to do for now let's be very cheaty instead of pushing here I'm gonna push to the back. Oh, this one. The swarm, outnumbered oh, and this. alone. Let's stay in the corner. Let's be safe. Turn the magnet off and let's be ready. I'm just trying to kill everything that's appearing. So this is one of the worst one you can ever have. If you have this one when you're starting the game, you're dead. If you don't have this place built up really properly, this one is one of the most hardest swarms to survive. In my, I, I think I started three or four playthrough where all I got was those in the beginning and every time I would just die and have to start over. That's where I keep talking to you guys about the um, random aspect of this mod pack that I have no idea how to resolve. I would have thought that each type of uh, event would be rated on a scale to say like this is an easy event, this is a hard event, this is an impossible event, like stuff like that, and it would make sure to not give you events that you have no chance of surviving in the beginning. But that is not the case, and I died so many times to an event that I didn't even know what I was supposed to do against the event. It was just there, killing me, and there was nothing I could do. And I don't have a weapon yet, so breaking these cows. Oh, that that was probably a bad idea when I did. Let's just drink some juice as fast as possible. I thought that the event was over and that I was just trying to clean up things, but obviously there had to be one of those magical ones that appeared and killed me, started killing me. And there's still another one alive. Oh, it's right there. Did I get it at least? No, I think I didn't get it. Which means I'm still at risk of being killed. Let's drink again. And you know what? This is getting too risky. I'm drinking the... I'm having the tackle. So I can't believe I've had to use one of the taco, but that's what they're here for. If you get into a situation where you're in danger, don't hesitate. Just eat the taco. Because it's better to eat the taco and stay alive than not to eat the taco. And won't this event just end already? Let me just check. So slash. Yes, the swarm is over. So basically, you just haven't despawned yet. And I'm wondering if they haven't despawned because of all of these hives everywhere. So this is really scary because if the hives are not going to disappear, I don't know what to do. So it's kind of funny, I'm saying I don't know what to do because I actually don't know what to do. I've never survived this event. And in the other playthrough that I was trying to do, I was trying to find a way to do an event without ever dying. So I never really had any kind of practice where I was surviving the swarm. Oh, let me... I just made a sword to be able to break that because that was getting annoying. that be oh this is so annoying this one is kind of stuck and I can't kill it for whatever I'm trying to do which is really annoying because I don't want to have oh yes I can hit it from here okay good so still hearing some bee noise uh, nope not here Back there, can I hit those from here? Yeah, okay. Can I try and destroy these? So I don't know that these, if they're a problem, I don't know if they're dangerous is what I'm trying to say. Maybe they have no danger whatsoever. There's just stuff that 
can be destroyed. What I don't know what I'm trying to figure out is if there's something that can still spawn bees or not. I hate having these things all around my base. This is looking so disgusting. But I don't really know what else to do. Okay, so that bee's taken care of. And this is all stopped because... Oh, it stopped because I'm not extracting. Sorry. I thought it was all stopped because it didn't have power. Because it still had store power from the last time. So the other thing I need to do is create another lava generator and put it back here so I can start powering all of these machines because I'm going to cable them from under. So we're going to need a conduit facade machine pretty soon. So this episode has been like 25 minutes long, but I think you're getting the gist of what I want to do here. Um, let me get rid of that tree. Ah, that's what I thought. <laughs> I was hearing still some noise, and I'm like, where are they coming from? And some were hidden behind the tree. So at least this is taken care of. And I need to empty. That's a lot of resource. I don't even know where all of these resources are coming from. So this, this, let's get rid of anything I don't need to keep on me. And now Taco. Do I have another Taco? Yes, I do have another Tier 1 Magical. Oh, the, but that's the big one. I don't want to use that one. So do I have, I have four spies. So let's craft another tier one diamond tackle because I don't want to take any chance, which means I'm going to need another tortilla and I'm going to need another, ch uh, not chicken, uh, fish, soft fish tackle. Do I not have any soft fish tackle already? No, do I not have any fish? I do have fish, but it's not cooked. So let's put it in the furnace to cook right now. And I only need one, so let's mask click to get the first one that gets produced. I'm going to keep half, just in case I need it for something else. I missed it. Let's grab this one. Oh, hey -oh. I don't know what's going on. Okay, let's put that in here. Now, taco. And I'm going to make a soft fish taco. I'm going to push back in here, and I'm going to make another diamond taco. That I'm going to grab... And you see, like, that's that's so useful. That's why you need the taco. If it wasn't for the taco, I'm not sure that I was going to survive this event. Oh, I love my mob farm. <coughs> so, now that we survived, we can start continue talking about the rest of the stuff to do. So, this is going to be the uh, sag mill slash alloy smelter corner, where whatever I sag mill, I put in the alloy smelter. And I want to add some flint here to try and get more secondary resource so let me see do i have any flint no can i make any flint yeah oh that, that was a lot of gravel so that's not necessarily a good move for now but technically now i have more drop chance and what's going on oh, i'm still not extracting so see now it's a different resource it's not that it was full it's that i can start cooking gold if there's tin stuck in there so I have to start importing stuff pretty soon or else it's not going to work. Do you have any Enderium on me? Enderium? No, I'm out of Enderium, but I have Enderium Essence. So let's go back here. Oh, yeah. Wow. Like this has started producing a lot. Like I think this is the easiest setup. I don't need big fields producing thousands and thousands of resource. It's not like I'm going to need thousands of Enderium blocks. But when I do need a little bit of it, having these resources will make it happen. So one, two, three. And now let's make some item conduit like so. Perfect. So now that I have these 32 item conduit, I can go to back down here. And like I was saying, when I was saying I was going to do it on the cheap. Whoa. Um, nope. Go away. Okay. So that one's dead. So when I said I was going to do it on the cheap is that for the time being, I can just do this. Oh, that's scary. That almost fell. So let's take a empty end and let's set that one to extract always active. And I'm just going to go around and actually bring that to the other side like I need it. So like this and hmm. Do I have anything left? Oh, yes, this is still full. So I'm going to need to break all of this. And I'm going to... Where? 
I'm going to do it this way, which I don't really like, but until I have the cable facade, this is actually the easiest way of doing it. I'm going to bring this and I'm going to put this cable up here. So now this is taken care of. Can I connect to this? Yes, I can. Can I connect to this other little bit right here? Yes, I can. And this one. Perfect. So everything's connected. So now technically this is exporting. Yes, it is. And it's going into our system. So this is the ugliest automation I've done in a long time, but it works. And I just don't want to waste so much time on setup in this playthrough. I just want to set the bare minimum to be able to plow through this mod pack as fast as possible. And the reason, one reason for this, and it's something that you guys should definitely take seriously, one of the definite reasons for trying to go through this mod pack as fast as possible is that the difficulty goes up with two things. It goes up with the number of mobs that you kill and it goes up with the time that passed. Having a mob farm right here is killing a lot of mobs. So you want to try and finish this mod pack as soon as possible. Okay, so I have one set of export working properly. The second did I see an Enderman or maybe it was just my imagination. So the other set of export I want to do is everything that's only pulverizable, which means I'm going to need another sag mill. So let's see if I can easily produce another sag mill. So I'm out of flint and I'm out of piston. Pistons are easy to make. I'm also out of machine chassis. Can I make one? No, because I'm out, not these. I'm out of the basic capacitor. Can only make one. So let's make one machine chassis and now I need some gravel and I know I have some gravel because when I had the sag mill set up there I was producing a lot of gravel yeah perfect so let's bring all of this into into our system oh, I did hear you 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 will be goodbye so I heard that noise and immediately I stopped what I was doing to take care of it Perfect, so let's dump all of this in here and I should be able to produce a second sag mill. So sag mill, like so. And then I can, what do I wanna put true to sag mill? I wanna put some, let's search for ore. I wanna put redstone. I wanna put coal. I wanna put emerald. I wanna put diamond, oh, not you, diamonds. And I don't, uh, the lapis the rest i don't really need to put through there are th some things that i'm not processing but i will process later it doesn't really matter right now so that sag mill i'm going to put down right here i don't want to put it in the corner this time for one simple reason i want to be able to access it because i'm going to put a second machine down here and it would be hard to access that corner and that one that one I won't see anymore once I have a machine here, but that's the one that I'm going to use. Of, oh, I need to pulverize a flower. I'll come back and I'll use that one. So back here, I'm going to set that to insert uh, in and out. And I'm going to put the insert on the brown channel this time. And you know what? No, I'm going to set the insert on the blue channel. I'm going to set the insert of that one on the brown channel. And I'm going to set the extract of that one on the brown channel. So brown channel takes these ore and these ores can now only go into this signal. The green channel I'm going to keep for pure import always. So this one that I have back here to export, I want to bring back in our system is always green. Here, the insert is going to be blue, but the extract is going to be green because I want it to go back into our system. And then I'm going to break this and I'm also going to turn the magnet on and break that connection because I'm going to put a connection right here and I want it to connect from the back so that it's easily accessible so this one I'm going to say disabled and then I'm going to connect that part right here and the reason you have to do it on different channels if I put this one to extract always active on green it's going to take whatever is defined in here and extract it on green and bring it to import back here so this one has to extract on blue, always active, because this one's the one that's insert on blue. And now I'm going to go based on priority. I always want to get carbon. We need so much carbon in this playthrough. I'm going to do coal ore first, then redstone, then diamond, 
then emerald just because of rarity and then lapis lazuli so now technically this is exporting on blue and bringing in here <laughs> see before i had the time to put the uh, white list that i wanted it grabbed cobblestone so now all of the coal ore is coming into here is going to get processed and then extracted right back the only problem that i have right now is that it still don't have power so that's something i'm going to have to fix right now so energy cable, I'm using the enhanced energy cable for one simple reason. The enhanced energy cable is made out of um, bronze and I had produced bronze by error. So since I started and it's going to give us 500, 120, I figured it was worth continuing that. <sighs> when things don't want to cooperate or help. So now I'm out of conduit binder. Let's make some more binder composite. Can I make a stack? Yes, let's start cooking that stack. So everything's being slowed down. But now that I have this right here, these machine, I'm going to start connecting the power by going around, oh, by going around like so. And for now, I'm just going to bring power when, where I actually need it because I don't have a lot of that cable still. And, oh, this is risky. Holding shift to not fall down. And, yeah, I can hit it. And this, perfect. So now let's just... Oh, I don't like this. I can actually go through those. Okay, so these I'm going to have to remove and put all in glass to make sure that I'm safe. So this right here, this right there, and this right here, and that's perfect. So now I'm going to be able to do my power setup. I'm going to need another lava generator like so. I'm going to need a furnace. And can I, I I'm, I'm think I'm going to need a block of redstone. So let's do that. So lava generator. And I'm going to need another ender tank like so. Let's make another cauldron and another ender tank like so. And do I still have some rose red? Yes. One, two, three. So now I can go down right here. I'm going to put the ender tank in the corner right here where it's not accessible, but it doesn't matter. And let's go outside. One. Can I hit it from under here? You know what? Let's make it easy on myself. Let's break this. Two and three. So this is now a lava tank that I want to put on export and put this generator right there. So now I'm also generating power here, which is powering this machine, which is beautifully making some resources that are getting cooked here. And by the way, this is also once in a while going to produce cobblestone, but it doesn't matter because in this playthrough, we need stone for a couple of things. So at some point when the machine gets stuck because it hasn't have place to produce the next resource, it's going to start burning uh, the cobblestone into stone and how how can I best explain this? Now we're doing iron. Iron is doing iron ore and a secondary potential of pulverized nickel. Gold has a secondary potential of silver. So if there's no spot here for silver and the next one would produce a silver, then it wouldn't continue. It would just get stuck here and not continue because there would be no place to put silver. So then this furnace would continue burning until all of the second item is gone. So that once all of the copper is gone, then it would produce a gold and the silver. But at some point, you'll just end up running through everything that you need to uh, go through. And here I'm getting the coal ore. You know what? Let me make a capacitor. Just want to accelerate those machines a little bit because I want to get resources as fast as possible. So I'm going to grab two capacitors like this. One, two. And I'm going to make a double layer capacitor like so and I'm gonna click it into this machine so now this should go faster once it actually gets some power though oh this is using 60 RF this is using 60 RF and this is using 60 RF which is 180 and this is only making 150 and I'm running out of lava so I'm gonna to have to produce a lot more lava but this is a simple thing to do and I said I wanted to uh, I wanted to generate more power back here like I, I wanted to bring power to this farming station so one thing full already so i really need to connect this so that it stop 
it stops stopping production. So one of the things that I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to create, I didn't do that in my last playthrough and I want to do it now is I'm going to make one of those lava generation generator mark two because we already have two and we basically need six. So let's just see quickly. One, two, three, four, five, six. Yes, we can do that. And oh, not gold ingot. Ooh, this, okay. So furnace, one, two, three, four, five, six. Lava generator, one, two, three, four, five, six. Wow, that's great. Now I can go back here. Let me grab this furnace. So that's seven. Ooh, no. Um. I'm kind of stuck. Um, I don't want to remove that machine. So I don't exactly what know what to do. What can I do here? Oh my god, it, this is this is really bad. So I have to remove this, and then that, and then this, and oh, this is going to be a nightmare. And then this, so I can walk out of here. Then I'm going to come back right here, and I'm just going to shift click things into here. That was so bad, I completely forgot that I blocked myself out of that hole by doing that. So let's bring everything in here. And like I said, this is something I'm all going to fix in my time lapse. I just want to show you quickly what I'm doing. So let's go back here, and now I can break this one and grab it. Let's go back upstairs, and now I have eight. So eight like this around one enderium block enderium block like so gives me a lava generator mark 2 which I've never used in this mod pack and I'm gonna plunk it down here and this is now 1200 RF so 8 times 150 <coughs> is 1100 oh this is sad it's really not producing so much more so what I'm hoping is that it's actually more efficient and not burning quite as much lava that is, as it needs to. But this is kind of sad because I, I would have thought that it would... Oh no, wait. I don't know math. 800? 150? No, I, I am right. It's not... It's really not a lot. This is... Oh, they give clay. I didn't know that they gave clay. So this is kind of sad. The lava generator is not really that worth it well you know you learn things every day and at least i made the mistake of creating it and i should have just waited to go directly to i should have waited to go directly to the production of uh power with the big uh, big reactor the only problem that i can see with that at the moment is that the big reactor is not something that I'm going to be able to craft this episode. Now, in between episode, with the uh, waiting for, with the uh, all of the thing that I'm going to automate and automatically produce and finalizing the setup, I'm probably going to end up in a situation where I have enough resource for the big reactor. But the next episode is going to be titled "Preparing for the Wither," which means producing all of the. Um, all of well the carbon rapier and producing the big reactor and setting up the um, what's it called a couple of turrets I, I want to get a couple of these railgun turret because then we're going to plop down the arena and let me take a quick look I forgot to claim this reward so let's <laughs> left reward. 64 cobblestone no one cares about that and the next one I need to complete is Wither Skeleton Skull. Let's just read the query first. There are many ways to obtain Wither Skulls. There is the old-fashioned way of finding a fortress in the Nether. You can use Witch Water in a mob farm to convert skeleton to Wither Skeletons. You can also see for drops that allow you to craft the Wither Skull. So let's look at Wither Skull and we don't have a single one. That mob farm has not produced a single Wither Skull. So this is kind of sad because the whole point of doing this was a production of Wither Skull. And... Ice? 
I don't. There's no more witch water in my box. I have no idea why, and this is kind of sad. Why is the. And now it's just normal water. Okay, so I don't know what happened, but I ended up breaking my bomb part. All I can think of is that when the event happened, one of the things that the event did was make mobs that freezes water, and one of those mobs froze my witch water. And it seems that when you freeze witch water, you get water, which is really sad. But that would explain why I didn't finally get up my witter's call. So let's remove this, put witch water back instead, and now we're back to creating wither skeleton. And, oh, I can't see anything. I'm going to replace the dark glass also. But now I'm getting more powerful mob, and hopefully I'm going to get my wither skeleton skull. So that was kind of a fail. I was really hoping that by the end of this episode, I would have the wither skeleton skull to be able to progress forward. So let's just do a quick search skull nope not a single skull what about head nope what about mob, uh, masher no okay so my upgrades are still in there so i'm probably going to need to create five more beheading upgrade even though i didn't want to lose the gold you know what let's finish on that so beheading this one right here so we're going to need 10 golden helmets so one two three one two Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. And I have to do this because getting these skulls is so important. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. Now I should be able to produce. Oh, I'm out of gold ingot. I need more gold ingot. One, two, three. So let's create those. One, two, three, four, and five. Okay, let's go put that into my mob farm. Ah, oh, I can't walk in there. Do I have any slab? Yes, okay. So hopefully by putting a slab, I'll be able to walk in there. Like so. Hmm, this is kind of annoying. Okay, so that works at least. So I'll be able to walk all... Whoa! I don't know what happened there, but this is really scary. So something did end up blowing up right here because you remember I had a platform right here. So let's just fix all this to not die. Oh. Okay, so that's closed in. And... Hmm. The <laughs> best of idea ever. I need to remove that and then move it. That small corner, now I should be able to access this and put five more beheading. Now let's go back to safety. So my mob farm is fixed again and I now have max beheading. And if I come in here and I look at skull, still no skull, but hopefully it's going to start working. And what about heads? Still no more heads, but. I should have things working and just to make sure I'm just going to sit here and oh you see it going up this is going up which means that we have things being imported oh okay so when you see it go up and down it means that whatever we imported got exported here or here because this is still exporting to be able to produce resources As you can see I'm still producing a lot of resources so hopefully during my time lapse I will get my wither skeleton skull because that's basically where I'm stuck right now. Do I have any dark glass in here? Just one and can I make any more? The reason I want some dark glass is I want to be able to see into my mob farm like I said and at the top I ended up having to break them to be able to put the uh, what are they called to be able to put the signs to fix this. Okay, so I guess I made 11. So let's go back up there. I just want to, like I said, replace with dark glass to be able to see what's going on. Dark glass. And dark glass and dark glass. And now I can come here 
and see this and yeah you can see that everything's flowing and these are creating wither skeleton which are falling down so yeah even if we don't have a wither skeleton skull right now at some point we'll end up having one for sure because that's that's the whole point of the mob farm so let's show that in here and i just want to take one last look for the skull still no skull but that's where i'm going to end the episode in the time lapse i'm going to fix my mob farm right here I'm going to bring power to it, which means I'm going to need some more bronze and some more energy conduit. And I'm going to maybe try and set up an export for the essence. Although, to be fair, at this point, I don't care so much about the essence because whenever I need a resource, I'll just transfer, transform the essence as I go and as I need it. But I'm going to finish connecting everything together. And one of the things I'm going to make is pyrothium dust. Because I'm going to change that lava production setup to be using pyrothium uh, liquid so that it can melt the cobblestone at 20x speed and get me more lava to generate my power. So that's what I'm going to do today to finish this episode, which means it's going to bring us to a step where we should be ready to do the wither preparation and finally move forward with the next step of this pack. So guys, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next episode. Bye now.
Yeah, yeah, yeah.